Hello, everybody, and welcome to my presentation about the effect of manual priming on fluency in individuals with Down syndrome who stutter. My name is Babette, and I am doing a PhD under the supervision of Professor Zink, Professor Maas, and Professor Rombouts at the KU Leuven. Today, I will introduce you to the research I have been doing in the field of stuttering in individuals with Down syndrome. Stuttering is a speech disorder wherein speech is interrupted by involuntary phoneme or syllable repetitions, prolongations and or blocks. Stuttering is often accompanied by maladaptive secondary behaviors that often add to the severity of stuttering. I would like to give you some examples for those of you who are unfamiliar with stuttering. I will first show you a multiple syllable repetition on the syllable op of the Dutch word opstaat, which means get up. Op, 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 staat. Now you will hear a prolongation on the first sound of the word geel, which means yellow in Dutch. You could... Geel. As I wanted to say, you could see that she squinted her eyes during the production of the word. And this is what we call a secondary behavior. Now you will hear a block on the sound O of the word opgemaakt, which means made the bed. During the stuttering event, you will again see some secondary behaviors. Opgemaakt. There appears to be a high prevalence of stuttering in individuals with Down syndrome. The avail available research shows prevalences between 10% and 45%, which is considerably higher than what we see in the neurotypical population, where the prevalence is 1%, or the population with intellectual disabilities, where it is 5%. Individuals with Down syndrome often have language and speech problems, and the presence of stuttering is thought to have a negative impact on their speech intelligibility. The problems these individuals have with communication can lead to a lower self-esteem, and therefore therapy would be recommended. Stuttering um, can be addressed indirectly or directly in therapy. Indirectly, the therapist works with the environment of the client and tries to lower linguistic, emotional, cognitive, or motoric demands on the speech production. For example, removing time pressure in conversations, ask parents to slow down their own speech rate, or ask them to use simpler sentences. The therapist does not work directly on the stuttering with the child. Indirect therapy might not always be sufficient, and then direct therapy can be recommended. In direct therapy, the therapist does work directly on the stuttering with the child. This can be by teaching new verbal strategies or by working on the emotions and cognitions around stuttering or trying to eliminate the secondary behaviors. However, Working directly on stuttering with individuals with Down syndrome can be quite difficult. And it sometimes can be even counterproductive. Because of their intellectual disability, they might have a limited self-awareness and might not even know that they stutter. If you then put the attention to the stuttering, this might make them aware of it and lead to a lower self-esteem. Additionally, they prefer passive over active learning. They often have problems with sustained attention and problem solving. And they have a limited verbal short-term memory. This all makes learning and retaining new speech strategies or working on cognitions and emotions quite challenging. Nevertheless, individuals with Down syndrome also show a lot of capacities. They like to communicate, they have interest in other people, they have a good verbal short-term memory, uh, sorry, a good visual short-term memory, they are good at imitation, and they are able to use gestures to aid their communication. 
Therefore, in my research, we were exploring if gestures could be used during stuttering therapy. Another reason for looking in this direction was that the authors Snyder, Waddell and Blanchett found that stuttering can be reduced by a manual secondary speech signal. A secondary speech signal is a signal that resembles and co-occurs with the first speech signal and improves the fluency of a speaker. A very clear example of this is choral speech. When a speaker who stutters narrates the same story at the same time as someone else, he becomes almost completely fluent. There is also a fluency effect when the person who stutters can only see the mouth movements of the other speaker. And Snyder and colleagues found that also manual speech feedback has a fluency enhancing effect. Keep in mind that these effects are temporary. As soon as the second speech signal is removed, the fluency effect also disappears. So what is the manual speech feedback? Snyder and colleagues asked eight neurotypical adults with persistent stuttering to produce sentences in four different conditions. In the control condition, they just had to say sentences that they memorized from a card. In the first experimental condition, they had to say sentences while they had a hand puppet on their hands, and they were instructed to open the mouth of the hand puppet just before they started speaking themselves, and then to continue the mouth movements the entire sentence. And they were also unable to see the hand puppet because they had to hold it behind a screen. And this is what is called syllabic manual priming, and it led to a 50% reduction in their stuttering frequency. The second experimental condition was identical, but this time they were able to see the hand puppet, and this led to a 75% reduction in their stuttering frequency. In the last experimental condition, somebody else used the hand puppet and the speaker who stuttered only saw the movements and this led to a 58% reduction. Based on this research, we were thinking if the hand movement with the hand puppet can make a person more fluent, even when they were unable to see it, then maybe another manual movement, for example, a co-speech gesture might also have a fluency enhancing effect. Co-speech gestures are gestures that produce spontaneously during our speech. Co-speech gestures can have either a substantial function or a pragmatic function. An iconic gesture, for example, is a substantial gesture, and it gives extra or redundant information about the content of speech. For example, if I say, I am going to work, then from my gesture, you can see that I will be going by back. A pragmatic gesture is a gesture that helps in structuring the speech and put emphasis on certain words. And as I am doing now, and the most known one are beach gestures. The positive thing about beach gestures is, is that it has no strict form. It can be produced or uh, with one hand or two hands, and you can actually produce it with every word. Therefore, we wanted to see if it could also function as a secondary manual speech signal. <clears throat> so our first research question was um, to see if uh, manual priming with a hand puppet also leads to a reduction in stuttering frequency in the individuals with Down syndrome who stutter. Our second question was, then if we could exchange the hand puppet for a beat gesture, um, because this would be um, more natural in everyday conversations. And in our third research question, we wanted to see um, the, uh, if there is an effect of the manual priming, if this effect also remains over a certain period of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. To examine this, we conducted an experiment. We recruited 18 individuals with Down syndrome who stutter. Uh, 
of who 11 were male and seven were female. They had a mean chronological age, age of 20 years and eight months and a mean developmental age of six years and seven months. Their mean stuttering frequency was 18.32%. In our study, we had three conditions. In the control conditions, the participants uh, said sentences while they were sitting on their hands to avoid any spontaneous manual priming. In the first experimental condition, they produced sentences with the hand puppets um, that they also could not see. It was held in a box. And in the second experimental condition, they produced sentences with beach, beach gestures and they did it by manually. As some of my participants were unable to read, sentences were shown with pictures. And before the experiment, we first tested how long the sentences could be. They were always of the format, someone eats something. We started with three word sentences. For example, the cow eats an apple and build up to 11 word sentences. For example, the black horse and purple cow eat a green banana and a red tomato. Most of my participants were able to produce 11 word sentences. I will show you an example of the experiment now. This is an example of the control condition. Bravo, Ezo, and Witte, Witte, Schipperzee, Eet, Rotten, Fritjes. This is an example of the puppet condition. Rotte, Kiep, en Zwarte, Pewin, Eet, Groene, Wapel. And here, And this is an example of the beat condition. Rijzen muis en witte dier. Eet roze potrum en zwarte spruitjes. In every condition, we calculated the stuttering frequency by adding all the stuttering events during a condition and dividing it by the total of words. Here we have the mean stuttering frequency of all the particip participants together in each condition. We chose to do a mixed model analysis as we wanted to take into account that all the participants were different from each other. Further, we had two repeated measures. Every participant entered the three conditions and this at two different moments in time. We also controlled for developmental age. We assumed that individuals with a lower developmental age would have more difficulty with performing the dual tasks, uh, which could influence their stuttering frequency. And therefore this was entered as a covariate. The results showed no significant effect of the different conditions or of the different sessions, and there was also no interaction effect. This might mean that manual priming has no fluency enhancing effect on the individuals with Down syndrome. However, during the administration of these tests, we did, some, did see some variation in the stuttering frequency of individuals with Down syndrome. And it could be that we did not find an effect because the individuals with Down syndrome are mutually different. This scatter plot shows the stuttering frequency of all the participants over three conditions and um, at two different time points. And there is no discernible trend at group level in these graphs. Therefore, we looked at individual performances. This participant, for example, shows an increase in stuttering events during the puppet condition and the beat condition compared to control condition in both the first and the second test condition. So here we have the opposite of what we would expect from manual priming. 
the second participant, on the other hand, shows a significant drop in their stuttering frequency in the puppet condition and in the beat condition compared to the control condition. While it is a little less pronounced the second time, there appears to be a fluency enhancing effect of mineral priming in this individual. While we do appear to see an effect of the conditions in this participant, stuttering can be very variable. As you can see at the control condition, there is already a significant drop between the first and the second administration of the experiment. So this should always be kept in mind when looking at individual level. Nevertheless, in this participant, there appears to be an effect. This shows that manual priming might occur in individuals with Down syndrome, but that, uh, so that the effect of manual priming um, occurs in individuals with Down syndrome, but it is that it is dependent on their individual differences. Research shows that individuals with Down syndrome often have problems with dual tasks because of limitations in their executive functioning. This might then put extra pressure on their speech production, which could lead to a higher stuttering frequency, which might have occurred in our first participant here. The individuals with um, a higher developmental age might have more capacity for dual tasks and were therefore better, better able to execute the tasks, which might then lead to the results of participant two. There could also be another reason for uh, the um, results. Um, individuals with Down syndrome appear to have a different organization of their speech. In neurotypical individuals, speech is often left lateralized, while in individuals with Down syndrome, speech perception is right lateralized, while speech production remains left lateralized. And this disconnection might influence the effect of manual priming. It is also possible that the puppet and the beat condition affects other aspects of speech production, which then can also affect the stuttering frequency. For example, we would like to take the articulation rate into account. The use of the puppet and beat gestures might slow down their speech, which is known to have a fluency enhancing effect on its own. It is also possible that the use of gestures actually increases their speech rate, which might then cause uh, more stuttering events. Therefore, we want to control for articulation rates. We also want to investigate the effect of the conditions on the typical disfluencies, um, which, such as um, and, um, pauses. Um, or whole word repetitions. Individuals with Down syndrome might use these typical disfluencies for word finding problems. Gesture use is thought of as an aid to retrieve information from long-term memory, and it might be possible that the constant movement leads to less typical disfluencies. Our take-home message is that the use of speech gestures during speech might be beneficial for certain individuals with Down syndrome who stutter, but that it has to be determined individually. And it is also necessary to, to, con to conduct additional research to see if the positive effect remains over time and that it does not become a secondary behavior. In case the fluency enhancing effect does not remain, then beach gesture should not be encouraged in these individuals. These are the references of my research. And I want to thank you all for your attention. And if there are any questions, please feel free to ask.